Welcome to the special 2020 stay at home social distancing COVID-19 what's new in minerals for the Rochester Mineral Symposium. Our first stop is Afghanistan as is usual. Not an awful lot that's coming out of there except the usual tourmalines, nice uh, morganites, etc. But in particular is uh, um, well, hang on, we'll show you the next slide. And uh, it's these very strange barrels, what they've been calling vorobievites, which are supposedly uh, vanadium rich, and uh, they're just barrel, and they are not technically, I suppose, really vorobievites. But what's interesting is there's strange banding, the strange sawtooth terminations, but of all the ones I photographed in the past, this is the only one I've seen that actually was on any kind of substantial matrix. Very interesting material. Next, we move on to Brazil. And again, tons and tons of tourmaline and quartzes of all sorts and barrels and you name it. And uh, this is the only interesting thing I thought was really kind of unique. And it is a beautiful fluorapatite from Araswai in Minas Gerais, Brazil from Yaroslav Hirschel, uh, five centimeters across. I'm sure if I didn't tell you what it was, you would think that it was a tourmaline, but it is a beautiful, beautiful fluorapatite. Now this material is definitely new. Unfortunately, as a gem material, uh, this came to me at the Tucson show just this uh, couple months ago. And uh, because it's a gem material, the location is being kept secret. At the moment, all I have is somewhere in Brazil. What's wonderful about this material is the range of colors from very purple to quite red. As you can see in some of these cut stones, there's a great deal of a, a red component to the material. Uh, I would imagine a bit like what you would call a Siberian amethyst. And this termination here, which yes, has been polished uh, there. You can see how really red it is hardly uh, blue at, uh, excuse me, purple at all but uh, very interesting material. Um, the people did have quite a few crystals. Uh, fortunately, they're pretty beat up, obviously being mined just for gem rough and not for fine crystals. Moving on to China, these were some pieces brought to me at the um, St. Marie show by well-known French dealer, Frédéric Esco. And they are fluorites from Dachang, Qinlong, Guizhou, China. And uh, this particular piece, 6.2 centimeters across. Very interesting. They're all cubes, not much in the way of modifications. Um, but uh, what's interesting, as you can see, is the color zoning that goes uh, is concentrated along the edges, the corners, and uh, in rather a rather strange manner across the surface of the crystals. Here's another sample of it, a little bit larger, also from Mr. Monsieur Frédéric Esco. Our next stop is Colombia. There is not an awful lot of material coming out of Colombia. I suppose the usual emeralds and some uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, quartz. The really nice quartz is from, I believe it's called Santander. But the one interesting thing that came to my attention recently I believe it was at the uh, Springfield show in last August in Springfield, Massachusetts, are these pyrite crystals with dolomite from Gachala. And uh, they're coated with, I'm not quite sure what, but it gives them a wonderful nutty brown um, patina. This one's fairly large at 20.5 centimeters across from Ziga Minerals. Next stop is the Congo. And we are talking about Congo, not the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There are actually two countries. Congo is actually to the north of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Tomek Prashkir of Spur for Minerals and his crew have been going down there quite a bit lately. It's not quite as crazy or dangerous as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but they are getting into some of the wonderful, wonderful deposits that are down there particularly in the Umfuate district, Boenza department. 
This is an example of some superb dioptase from down there, 5.1 centimeters high. And as I always say, if you are metrically challenged, there's 2.54 centimeters per inch. So at 5.1 centimeters, that makes it almost exactly two inches. There's also, if you look closely, a little bit of yellow mimetite on that matrix. Now, this is a specimen I really, I imagine a lot of you are going to think is fake. And it was thought to be fake by Tomek when he first purchased it. But upon close examination, soaking in acetone, everything else, it is not a fake. It's an, a gorgeous thing. It's only a thumbnail, three centimeters high, but what a combo. I think I, I would love to have this one in my collection. This is from Sanda Kambedi in the Manduli district. Also from Mfwate in, is uh, this beautifully twinned uh, cerusite at 2.8 centimeters across, also from um, Sparifer. And this is another beautiful cerusite from uh, Mfwate, four centimeters high. Nice, uh, trying to be a nice snowflake there. Something else interesting from this area is the hemimorphite. And uh, this one's 5.4 centimeters high, also from Sparifer. Pale blue, rounded, somewhat botryoidal masses, such as you see in this particular piece. And uh, also from last year, were some wonderful um, dioptase. And these things are really strange. They're forming kind of, I don't know what you'd call them. They're hemispherical, cup-like sort of aggregates, all made out of just dioptase. Wonderful things. Frederica Sco had these. This particular one is 7.8 centimeters in height. Now, moving on to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Some several lovely pieces such as you see here have been uh, on the market. This is a malachite spray in the middle of cobaltian calcite. This is from the famous Mashamba West Mine in Kolwezi, Katanga region, province. And uh, these things are really quite gorgeous. They've been getting back into the good old um, Cooperites, such as you saw so many years ago from there, that got us all so excited about that locality. This one is 6.7 centimeter, 6 centimeters across from a collector by the name of Jelani Daniel, or Daniel. Now, this is something that really blew my mind. I was actually shooting for the Museum of Natural History in Luxembourg a couple years ago when I saw some of this for the first time and now it seems to be on the market. These are beautiful Elbi crystals. And no, they're not from Katanga. They're not from the areas producing all the amusing, amazing copper and um, radio, radioactive minerals. But this is from a province called Kibu de province. It's way, way over on the east side of the country against the far eastern border. And these pegmatites are producing exquisite Elbi tourmalines. This one's 5.5 centimeters high from Patrick Mayer. And um, unfortunately, not a lot of these crystals have reached the market because they're being used primarily for gem material. There was an amazing display, uh, a whole case, fishbowl case, as they call them, at the last Tucson show just a couple months ago with I don't know how many, must have been uh, 50 of these tourmalines in the display case. This is another nice little selection from Kibu province, from Patrick Mayer. The largest one is 5.5 centimeters in height. France has not been producing a great deal lately, but one of the classic localities is uh, producing again. This is fluorite from the famous locality of Valzergue in Aveyron, France. It's 14.2 centimeters high, so that's pretty good size. That makes it maybe five and three quarter inches in high, uh, in height. This is from Alain Marton and photographed at the last uh, St. Marie show. That would have been June in 2019. Here is an, this is another one also from Alain, 5.2 centimeters high. The classic color of the yellowy orange. And if you look closely, some of them have beautiful little blue 
uh, zones just below the crystal faces. Next we have Germany and uh, not producing a great deal lately. But somebody got back into a, the Strasburger Glück at it in the Erzgebirge in Saxony, Germany, and is producing these beautiful, strange, yellowy green crystals sprinkled with calcopyrites. This one is 20.2 centimeters across, so that's about eight inches. Nice size specimen for you cabinet mineral collectors. India, of course, is always producing tons and tons, literally hundreds and tons of fine zeolites in the deccan traps in the state of Maharashtra. But in another province, that of Tamil Nadu, we have beautiful amethyst. This is from the Kakamanural mine in Karur, Tamil Nadu. This one's 12.7 centimeters across. And there's another one about the same size. You may remember that a number of years ago, quite a bit of material was coming out of this mine and this region, and they tended to be loose clusters and uh, forming rather interesting uh, scepter-like growths. Iran has been in the news uh, lately, at least in the mineral news, um, other than the usual political and uh, arena with people rattling their swords. And uh, if you've been reading the mineralogical record at all lately, uh, last issue or maybe two issues back, there was a big article about these salt domes way in southern Iran. Actually, they're on some islands off the southern coast and some on the main coast, I guess. And these are producing incredible, rare, weird minerals, including what may be the best Zuniites in the world. I hate to say that because it used to be the best Zuniites came from over near Quartzsite, Arizona, which is my home state. Anyway, these are from Kalat Ebala Salt Dome in Bandar Abbas, Hamozgan, Iran. This is now in the collection of Tom Moore and is 1.7 centimeters high. So that's about three quarters of an inch. I suppose the news out of Ireland hasn't really changed too much in the last couple of years. The Joe Larkins Quarry in Shanafistin, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in County Galway, Ireland, is continuing to produce some very fine fluorite crystals. They tend to be primarily cubes uh, with a dark zoning just below the surface. And on rare occasion, in case that didn't go through, on rare occasion, you can find uh, octahedra with oriented, sometimes oriented cubes on their surface. Uh, from this little presentation, they're all from Mountain Minerals. A number of dealers have been carrying these things in the last couple of years. This one is 4.9 centimeters, so it's just under two inches. Here's another set, uh, sample at 4.6 centimeters high. Another sample from uh, Joe Larkin's quarry from uh, Green Mountain Minerals. He's not the only one carrying these. And should you uh, decide that you need to get one for your collection, which I do recommend. There's a lot of the material on the market. It's not terribly high uh, in price, but uh, run right out to your favorite dealer or in these days, uh, get on the internet and have them ship one to you, hands-free, COVID-free. Italy has not been producing a great deal lately, but at the St. Marie show last spring, there were some very fine analcemes from Monastir Sardinia, Italy. Marcus Grossman had all of them that I, that I saw anyway. Very fine analcene crystals. This cluster is 2.7 centimeters across, so that's a fairly respectable thumbnail. Madagascar is, of course, always in the news, always producing more pigmatite minerals and other odds and ends from here, there, and everywhere. Uh, typical of this material, beautiful liticodite crystal from Patrick Meyer, 7.1 centimeters high. But I think the biggest news is a brand new mineral. This was available at the Tucson show being sold 
by Laurent Thomas of Polychrome Minerals. And it's a brand new mineral named after it, Laurent Thomas. Laurent Thomasite is from Baravina, Betruca, Tuliara province, which is kind of in the southwest part of the country. And uh, it's being cut as gemstones. Uh, it's quite gemmy, though most of the stones I saw do have some inclusions. Um, and it's very hard to get an absolutely clear stone. What's amazing about this material is it's extremely dichroic. Now here's one view looking at the very typically flattened, rather etched crystals. They don't show a lot of crystal form. This one's uh, 2.8 centimeters high. This is a view of the same crystal looking edgewise. Amazing dichroism, just amazing. Mexico is the star of the show for this what's new. And the locality is And uh, of course, azurite, which is what is best known for, or first known for, 3.5 centimeters high from Valenzuela's minerals. And here you see it with some beautiful hemispheres of malachite, 6.6 .6 centimeters high, also Valenzuela's minerals. So it is also known, of course, not just for azurite crystals, but for malachite, pseudomorphs after azurite. <clears throat> and here you see a great combination of the two at 9.3 centimeters high, just under four inches. Perfect size for my collection. This is an absolute sweetheart. Four centimeters high, a gorgeous miniature specimen. <clears throat> Look at those azurites just perched on top of that ball like someone put them there, but they didn't. It's not a fake. The barites coming out of the Milpias mine are superb. They are getting gemmier, uh, lustrous, and are particularly gorgeous when they have inclusions of malachite such as this one. This one is from the Marshall Sussman collection. Besides the Valenzuelas and... Um, Evan Jones, uh, Marshall has been bringing in a lot of very superb material out of this mine. This is another piece, a little bit larger, 6.1 centimeters across, with a lot more malachite underneath the specimens, also from Balanceno's minerals. Oh, the Milpias mine is also known for the, what may be the best brushantites in the world. This is just a little cluster of nicely terminated, thick, dark green crystals from the Wendell Wilson collection at 4.1 centimeters across. This is a absolutely gorgeous piece, 10 centimeters across from the Marshall Sussman collection. When they are more fibrous in nature, they tend to be a much lighter shade of green. Something else new from the locality, calcite tinted, I'm guessing by malachite, but beautiful stacked rhombohedrons, well, sub-parallel growth, superb things, 6.2 centimeters across from Valenzuela's minerals. Now I'm sure this material is post-mining, but maybe not. This is calcanthite from the Milpias mine and uh, 9.5 centimeters high. This is from collector Brendan O'Connor. And some more interesting new material, chrysocolla underneath quartz, 5.8 centimeters across, also from Marshall Sussman. This is some more chrysocolla, polished as a cabochon, and it's 43 by 46 millimeters from Valenzuela's Minerals. Another one of the wonderful new things coming out of Milpias are the cuprites. These are vying to become some of the best cuprites in the world. This group is 3.7 centimeters across from the Wendell Wilson collection. This is another one from Valenzuela's Minerals, 3.4 centimeters high. And a very fine piece from the Marshall Sussman collection, 2.7 centimeters in height. 
another one from the Brendan O'Connor's collection. 1.3 centimeters high. Gorgeous thing with dodecahedral and uh, cubic modifications on it. This is one that just blew my mind and I'm sure everybody out there looking at this will feel the same way as I do. An incredible specimen at 1.5 centimeters high. That's only about five eighths of an inch, but look at that bizarre form. Absolutely amazing. Did not have to do much in the way of backlighting to get this one to glow. And here's some coop, uh, cuprite on native copper from Milk PS. Five centimeters across from the Brendan O'Connor collection. Something else that's new from the collection, uh, from the locality, excuse me, is dioptase. Quite a bit of dioptase has been coming out. It's usually associated with quartz, which frequently overgrows it, such as on this four centimeter piece from Valenzuela's. Another fine example, uh, not great from the dioptase, except for the color that it's bringing, uh, showing through the quartz, 3.8 centimeters wide from Valenzuela's minerals. Another dioptase, this one showing very nice crystal uh, formation of the, uh, of the dioptase and um, 3.5 centimeters high from Marshall Sussman's collection. Another nice little piece from the collection of Jim and Imelda Klein. That's 6.2 centimeters across. I must apologize for the color, but uh, digital absolutely hates the color of dioptase, will not record it faithfully, faithfully, and I am not yet gotten good enough with color management in Photoshop to get the color to look as it actually is a much richer, beautiful sheet of deep, almost emerald green on dioptase, which you've all seen at some time or another, I'm sure. A little less aesthetic in many ways, but still superb. There have been some very nice goodites coming out of Mill PS Mine. This is also from the Brendan O'Connor collection. It's 7.4 centimeters across. And here's another one with nice iridescent uh, colors on it, associated with some very nice azurite crystals. Also from the Brendan O'Connor collection at 5.6 centimeters in height. And this is what we expect from some of the finest malachite from Mill PS. And this was 15.4 centimeters across, so just about six inches from the Brendan O'Connor collection. Another nice malachite, this time pseudomorphing azurite, with some very nice barite crystals. Brendan O'Connor collection, 5.9 centimeters across. This was a new mineral to me, at least from Milpias at the Tucson show. Some beautiful olivonites, possibly vying as some of the best, world's best. This was 2.8 centimeter uh, wide group of doubly terminated crystals from the Peter McGaw collection. And another nice little group on matrix. The whole piece is 5.8 centimeters high, also from Peter McGaw. And another nice little thumbnail, 1.9 centimeters high, Brendan O'Connor's collection. This is the largest single crystal of olivonite that I've seen so far at 3.1 centimeters high. That's about an inch and a quarter. Gorgeous thing. I mean, dark, dark, dark green, so dark that it almost looks black. Something else new to me, Planchiite on azurite, 3.5 centimeters high from Valenzuela's mineral. Something else I had not seen from the Mill PS mine, very fine pyrite crystal. This one's 5.7 centimeters across from the Brendan O'Connor collection. Something else new to me, Shattuckite, again growing under the quartz. 3.3 centimeters high from the Marshall Sussman collection. Here's some associated with quartz and malachite from Brendan O'Connor, 5.5 centimeters across. Another shattuckite <clears throat> under quartz from Nopius Mine from the Marshall Sussman collection, 3.7 centimeters high. A 
This is a big surprise for me. Spangolite with cuprite. The largest crystal there are towards the left, bluish green, quite dark, is 0.7 centimeters and is from the Brendan O'Connor collection. And uh, collectors, local collectors, artisanal miners have been going into the closed down Ojuela mine now for some number of years, collecting minerals for uh, us crazy mineral collectors. And uh, they got into some very fine austenites, such as this 2.9 centimeter high piece from Alex Schaus. Now these Lagrandites technically came out a couple years ago, but this is absolutely the best one that I've seen from the from the uh, from this uh, recent material. Maybe not the largest, but the form is exquisite, beautiful, complex termination. 3.3 centimeters high now in the Jason New collection. This is pseudobaleite with Atacamite from the Amelia Mine, Santa Rosalia in Baja, California. And uh, these specimens are a bit problematic. Um, a lot of people questioned their the whether they were real or fakes. And a lot of people swear that they are real. But I saw a YouTube video recently where someone had actually soaked one overnight in uh, acetone, I believe, and the whole thing fell apart. So caveat emptor, check yours out and uh, let us know whether they're the real McCoy or not. Another wonderful new find from Mexico. Wolfenite from the La Morita mine in the Sierra Mojina district in Chihuahua. 10 centimeters high from the Jamel Jim and Imelda Klein collection. Wonderful pieces. This is another very fine piece from the Doug Fisk collection and uh, with a nice covering of the matrix with mimetite. Another very fine piece from the Herb Brown collection, 11 centimeters across. A lot of this material was available at the Tucson show Probably the largest quantity was in the booth of the Collector's Edge. This is a superb specimen of wolfenite with calcite from a classic locality of the San Carlos mine, or maybe it's the Apex mine. I'm not 100% sure which is absolutely correct. But anyway, this locality many years ago produced fantastic wolfenites and vanadinites. Very distinctive. Once you've seen the vanadinites from there, you can't forget them, very easily recognizable. Anyway, uh, a lot of this material has been coming out recently and uh, available at the Tucson show. This one is 4.5 centimeters across from Spirifer. Also at the Tucson show, Peter McGaw had a number of the Wolfenites from the Apex Mine in San Carlos for sale. This one, a uh, couple of matrix pieces of calcite, matrix crystals. 0.9 centimeters across is the largest crystal. And this is an example of some of the classic vanadinites from the, San, the Apex Mine in San Carlos, Mexico. Also, Peter McGaw. Morocco continues, of course, to produce all sorts of good things. This is quartz and pyrite from El Hammam in the Meknes region of Morocco. This locality has been known in the past for producing some very fine fluorite crystals. This one's 4.1 centimeters across from Ziga Minerals. A slightly larger specimen, quartz with pyrite, 17.7 centimeters across. That's about seven inches. The mines in Boazere continue to produce very fine specimens. Of course, we're all familiar with the, with the, um, when Wilsonite and erythrite and other great minerals from there. This is Proustite, which is rather interesting. Um, from the Ait Ahmane mine in Boisere, and it's 7.2 centimeters high from um, Jordi Fabre. I'm afraid there's not an awful lot to report on from Pakistan. Yes, it continues. There has not been an awful lot to report on from uh, Pakistan recently, except for the usual thousands and thousands of superb 
aquamarines and shorals and uh, several other minerals but uh, that we've seen just seem to see an endless supply but uh, at the Tucson excuse me St. Marie show last year someone showed me this superb uh, titanite from the Sapare mine in the Mahane region in uh, um, Northwest Federated province of Pakistan at four centimeters high very gemmy lustrous and sharp and this is from Mustaf Ghulam of fine art minerals Poland's been in the news lately for producing some very fine minerals and uh, one of the biggest finds recently was a mine in Lubin Lower Silesia Poland where they hit what would almost be described as a cavern lined with superb pi uh, barite crystals sprinkled with beautiful little sparkly pyrite crystals this one is from uh, almost all the good material came uh, got into the hands of Sparifer and uh, 5.2 centimeters wide. Another one, 6.8 centimeters high. And another at nine centimeters across. Another one of the localities that have been pretty boggling are the granites around the town of Stregom. Ostregom is also in Lower Silesia, and there are, if I recall correctly, 39 operating granite quarries. And just like the granites in Colorado and New Hampshire, occasionally they hit pockets. It's best known for smoky quartzes and beautiful microclines, but they, and uh, actually a total of 60 different minerals, if I recall. Uh, and lately they've been hitting some amazing topaz in the Borov 17 quarry. And uh, this one is 10 centimeters high. This group of two crystals, 8.8 .8 centimeters high. And this one is 5.7 centimeters high. From another one of the granite pegmatites in the region is this beautiful fluorite on smoky quartz at 11.5 centimeters wide, good size specimen. What's neat about these is there's a uh, color change. The octahedral, particularly the blue fluorites from there, blue purple ones are, are uh, go from blue to purple, depending on whether you're looking at them under artificial or sunlight. Interesting to note that <clears throat> most of the octahedral ones from Stregom are actually a beautiful pink in color. Romania has not been producing an awful lot lately. The uh, most of the mines that produce the beautiful sphalerites and stibnites in the northwest have been closed down for many, many years, but there's still a trickle of some nice pieces coming out. And uh, Anton Watzel at the St. Marie Show last June had a couple of beautiful Vivianite specimens from Roja Pueni Alba. And uh, this one is 5.8 centimeters high. And uh, this is, tops it size-wise at 14.2 centimeters. Some beautiful pieces. They almost look like they should be from Bolivia, but they're good old from good old Romania. Spain has been producing some very interesting minerals too. From the fluorite mines in Asturias, way in the north coast of Spain. Um, they continue to produce some nice fluorites, but this is interesting, not just because of the fluorite, but because of the associated sphalerite, which is not terribly common up there. This is from La Viesca in Asturias. Ziga minerals, 4.4 centimeters across. This is quartz with orichalcite included in it and growing in between the crystals from the Josarco mine in Pinares, Cantabria. Cantabria is the province immediately to the east of Asturias. This is 19.5 centimeters wide from Ziga Minerals. Another interesting piece from the same mine at 26.2 centimeters across, also Ziga Minerals. One of the minerals we call jokingly, lovingly, black uglies, and normally we see these in uh, very fine specimens from Romania. But anyway, the Brunita pit in La Paraleja, La Union, 
Murcia, or as the Spanish would say, Murcia, Spain, is Kronstadtite. This is 22.3 centimeters across from Jordi Fabre. David Ziga of Ziga Minerals has been very active in Spain in recent years. This is quartz included by magnesio rebeckite, giving it the blue color from the La Juanona quarry in Andalusia, which is in the south. 4.8 centimeters across. And another one, 4.7 centimeters high, also from Ziga Minerals. Last but not least, Minerals in the United States. Not real exciting, but interesting material. Good old Plumbago Mountain in Nuri, which produced that incredible find of mostly green with uh, sometimes strawberry tipped crystals years ago back. It was a summer, I think it was uh, something like 72 or 3, are uh, these quartzes with little fine needle like crystals of albite tourmaline. This one's 3.8 centimeters high. And this one, 5.5 centimeters across. These two specimens were both at the Springfield Shell last August from Minerals of the World by Jonathan. Now this next specimen is an interesting one. We don't see an awful lot out of Minnesota, except maybe some nice agates and a few things from up around the Great Lakes. But a crew was doing some road work, went through a basalt in St. Louis County, Minnesota, and this they hit this 27 centimeter wide um, copper specimen that's over 10 inches across. The exact location is being kept secret, as is the owner for the time being, because the men who were doing the work on the road, of course, were not uh, supposed to be collecting. New Mexico is producing a few odds and ends here, and I believe this is going to be the last of our installments for this uh, What's New. Phil Simmons is a very active field collector. He's the one who, a number of years ago, collected all those amazing beautiful blue halite crystals from down near Carlsbad, New Mexico. Well, he got into the classic Smoky Quartz locality over in Lincoln County, and this group is 13.6 centimeters wide. And this one at 13.3 centimeters high shows the beautiful combination you sometimes get with a green octahedral fluorite. Oh, I was wrong. <clears throat> one more locality to deal with, one more new find. This material, I believe, was also collected by Phil Simmons, and now about five years ago. I did not see any, see any of this until, I believe it was uh, last summer. This is Vanadian calcite from Garfield County, Utah. Now in the Terry Heising collection, it is 13.7 centimeters in height. This is a close up of a group of crystals on that previous specimen. The cluster is 1.3 centimeters across from Terry Heising's collection. And the material seems to be getting just better and better. This is the same, uh, same locality and also Terry Heising's collection. For those of you who don't know, he's a major calcite collector. This one is 12.6 centimeters across. Now that is the end of what's new. I hope you enjoyed this at home version of what's new without having to travel, spend a lot of money, and maybe catch some nasty virus. See you next year, hopefully in person.